This is a new standard D-25, still flying at the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. Still flying and carrying paying passengers. Probably the oldest airplane in the world flying commercially. Take a closer look at this airplane. We'll see when it was built, how it was built, and later on we'll go for a ride in it. was first produced in 1929 to replace the standard J-1, which was built as a trainer in World War I. After the war, these standard J-1s, along with their more famous Curtis Jenny, were used by barnstormers for passenger flying. The new standard offered a new concept, the capacity for carrying four passengers, greatly increasing the profit for each flight. The new standard was built in a great many versions, the main differences being the type of engine installed, including this D-30 on floats and this single-place cargo carrier. Designed by Charles H. Day, the new standard D-25 received approved type certificate number 108 and was produced in February of 1929 by the New Standard Aircraft Company of Patterson, New Jersey. The New Standard was also built as a mail plane, as the NT-1 trainer for the U.S. Navy, and a version was built for the U.S. Coast Guard. standard D-25 is a large airplane. That elliptical upper wing spans 45 feet. This airplane is an original restored by Cole Palin and his group. Cole discovered three of these D-25s in various stages of decay and taking the best parts from each, restored the present airplane. Shown here is a fuselage before restoration. The plane was converted to a crop duster, the forward cockpit replaced by a chemical hopper. The fuselage construction was unusual for this period. Instead of the usual welded steel tubing, the fuselage was built up of aluminum angles bolted and riveted together. This was fared by spruce stringers and fabric covered. The, the wing construction was all wood, typical for this period. Shown here is the upper wing before restoration. Those spars are spruce I-beams. The leading edge is plywood covered, forming a rigid torque box. The ribs are built up from basswood rather than the usual spruce and form a Gottingen 533 airfoil, a low-speed high lift section. The entire wing is fabric covered. By the fall of 1980, the aircraft was completely restored, awaiting engine installation. A yellow six-gallon oil tank is installed on the firewall immediately behind the chrome molybdenum engine mount. A 64-gallon fuel tank is mounted in the upper wing center section. The landing gear is of the tripod type, hinged at the fuselage bottom center line with two long spring oil shock struts bolted to the upper longerons. The 30 by 5 wire wheels are equipped with Bendix mechanical brakes. The wing struts are streamlined steel tubing tied together with streamlined flying wires. The forward cockpit has seats for four passengers with a step mounted halfway up both sides for easy access. The rear pilot's cockpit is a little higher for better visibility. Notice how the center section brace wires run right into the forward cockpit.
The pilot's cockpit shows the usual instrument arrangement for this period. The two missing gauges are engine instruments which will be installed when the engine is mounted. The aluminum angle construction of the fuselage shows up well here. Unusual are the four sets of pedals on the floor. The two outboard pedals operate the rudder and the two inboard operate the wheel brakes. has a top speed of 110 miles per hour, cruises at 98, and stalls at 37. It has a range of 490 miles and a service ceiling of 18,000 feet. The was originally fitted with a Wright J-5 whirlwind engine of 225 horsepower. This airplane is fitted with a Continental R-670 engine of just about the same weight and horsepower. Turn. Let's climb aboard and see what it's like to fly in a 1929 airplane. Himself, the owner and operator of the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. Static tube is mounted on the right front interplane strut. This is for the airspeed and altimeter. The ailerons are on the upper wing only and are operated by a long link strut which runs down to a belt crank, which is operated by a push-pull tube, which runs along the front spar of the lower wing. River here. Hmm, looks like Cole's having a little fun with us back there.
Now Cole is going to do a couple of mild power stalls to give the passengers a thrill. Notice the amount of rudder correction required as the airspeed drops off. to the left, followed by a wing over to the right. back over the aerodrome. Notice the old type airspeed indicator mounted on the strut. We're throttling back and now we're turning on a long final approach to landing. Listen to the wind in the wires. That's what it's like to fly with a barnstormer in a 1929 airplane. D-25.